to Mr. Harding. The Drapier's Second Letter A letter to Mr. Harding the printer. Upon occasion of a paragraph in his newspaper of the 1st of August, relating to Mr. Wood's halfpence, was printed on the 4th of August 1724, in response to the British Privy Council's testing of Wood's coin. The Drapier alludes to the involvement of the Duchess of Kendal in his first letter. In the second, the Drapier de emphasizes her involvement and shifts his focus to blame the Whig party. According to the Drapier, the Whigs are the ones who would bribed in securing his patent. The central target for this letter is the Privy Council's report produced under the authority of Walpole. It was necessary for the Drapier to attack the report. To ensure that the people would be willing to resist the coin and deny the truth that Wood's supporters issued. Therefore, the Drapier describes them as only a few betrayers of their country, confederates with Woods. The Drapier does not directly attack Isaac Newton's assay of Woods' coin, but instead attacks the process behind the assay and the witnesses who testified before the Privy Council. In his criticism of the Privy Council's report, the Drapier claims that the report is part of Wood's propaganda and lies. Because Wood released three proposals concurrent with the report. Lowering the patent production quota from £100,800 to £40,000 worth. That no one is obliged to accept more than five pence halfpenny per transaction. And to sell the coin at two's one d a pound or his raw copper at one's eighty a pound. Wood's choice of wording, that the Irish would be obliged to accept the coin, was criticized by the Drapier who then accused Wood of perfect high treason for obliging the people to take any copper coin when the king lacked the constitutional authority to do such a thing. In the second letter, the Drapier walks a careful line between openly indicting the king and merely hinting at his relationship with Wood's patent, while the Drapier accuses Wood. He constantly refers to the king's authority and power to issue legal tender, this is called the king's prerogative. In particular, the Drapier claims that the king is unable to force his people to accept any copper-based currency. As the Drapier points out, the constitution establishing Ireland as a kingdom limits the authority of the monarch because it forces the people of Ireland to use only gold or silver coins as official currency. Throughout this argument, the Drapier compares the king's ability to print money with the petty amount of political power held by Wood, which undermines the image of the king as the supreme authority in Ireland while hinting that the king is not protecting the rights of the Irish people. The Drapier stops himself before he commits treason. And he instead argues that the king would never accept a patent that could harm Ireland, to the Drapier. The king would never act in such a way as to help would harm the people of Ireland. In response to calls for action from the Drapier in the second letter, a group of bankers joined together on 17 August 1724, agreeing in writing that they would not accept the coin produced under Wood's patent. Other merchants and tradesmen followed in a similar fashion. However, this did not stop Walpole from ordering the commissioners of the revenue in Ireland to enter the coin into the Irish economy. Regardless of Walpole's orders, the Irish Lord Justices did not act. Lord Shannon did not command that his troops should be issued Wood's coin. And Middleton's House of Lords and Connolly's House of Commons did not pass any resolution backing up Walpole's order, which effectively prevented the coin from being distributed. End of the letter. Thank you.